I've just found this handsome young man just crawling around, one of the ones I was at the dinner table, so I introduce yourself. I am Dave Legino. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your history. Well, I'm an actor, uh, just appeared in uh, three of the Snow White, uh, one of the Snow White movies, three of the Harry Potter uh, movies, uh, playing Fenrir, Greyback and Brock. And uh, I've known Dave, I was a professional cage fighter, I've known Dave since the early 90s. How long is that? Like over 20 years, yeah. 22, 23 oh, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah and, went, um, and neither of us were famous yeah. or, or celebrated in any way back then, but he said to me, I'm going to write a book one day. He had a scrapbook there. He said, one day they scrapbooks me this thick, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to put you in it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he did, and, I, and uh, I ended up having a mu little music career as well. And I said, well, I'm going to write some songs and put you in it. So years later, all, all this uh, like predictions you know, came true. But Dave was a character, even before he was like known uh, to the public, he was always a character and he's always good fun, good natured and you know very entertaining. Probably the most entertaining person you'd be around and he's always happy. And uh, I'm the miserable one who's happy. Because we lived together for a couple of years. Oh did you? Yeah. We lived together in um, in Forest Hill and Dulwich we lived. Uh, we had a flat and I had it was me, him and I had a giant snake called Fang. It was like a, a 16 foot uh, boa constrictor. And uh, we How did you manage to get a snake? <laughs> well, you, you just, you, just you, you, you buy them. They're not 16 foot when you buy them. I can tell you. <laughs> you buy, you buy a little like three foot or four footer, and then yeah. which seems like a cuddly pet, but then you keep on feeding it. Yeah. All the neighbours' cats go everything, oh. and then um, eventually it turns up into a huge uh, six, 16 foot python, yeah. uh, and then you, and then you get a good pair of cowboy boots and a belt out of it. Yeah. Gosh, bloody hell! Yeah. How did you first meet Dave? I was working in a nightclub, it was a paradise club in, in Islington, that was the early 90s, it was the first kind of established rave, before that raves were around in warehouses and fields, and it was the first place where, uh, premise which had a rave every week, uh, so I was working there, he used to come in um, regularly, so I just kind of knew him as someone that people knew. Um, I've been living abroad and I just got back so I didn't know who the faces were. He used to come in and then before, I think within two or three months, we, uh, we, we we were living together in, uh, in, in a flat in uh, Dulwich. Yeah, so, so it was just, just in popping in there. But then I was a professional wrestler back then and I was bigger. Yeah. Bigger and I had really long hair and I had like a thick moustache and a beard. Yeah. So, so I looked a bit strange myself. But he, he was always shaven headed and uh, dressed flash. I suppose he looks older now, but he was, he's got a very young spirit, young heart. Yeah. So they call him the one flash bastard, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's been in the boxing, hasn't he? Dave, he's done all the boxing thing with Joe Parle and etc. Yeah, he's, he? he's been involved as, as a fighter. He's come to all my fights. Uh, he's involved in the fight game. And um, I, I, I don't think of him like that, because even I live with him, there was no element of violence or aggression with him whenever I've been around him. Uh -huh. He's just a, a, a happy, jovial joker. You know, he can switch it on when he has to, but I don't really... You know, it's not something I weigh up when I think of him as a friend. Although I, you know, I know full well that he's uh, quite capable. Yeah. And in all the years that you've known him, because obviously you've known him for decades now, mm. do you feel he's changed in any way or...? In a good way, no. You know, everyone gets older, you know, I, I, I've probably changed. He hasn't sold out, you know, if you can, if you can call it that. He's always, you know, people can be cynical about his approach and, and, and his lifestyle, but he's always just kind of been... He's out to have a laugh with everything. Everything, even, even the most serious, grave situation, he'll find something amusing, you know, like he could be facing death and he'll crack a joke. You know? uh, so, he, you know, it's been like that. I mean, things, you know, things have been quite harsh on him. Life's hit him pretty hard. Recently, he's, yeah, he's had a lot of kicks, hasn't All the time, it's, ever since I've known him, he'll go from one massive problem, almost, almost things of, of his own making. You think, well, why don't you just behave yourself and these, this won't happen? And he's like, yeah. he'd sooner not and take whatever comes. And, and uh, but, you know, he's still here, which surprises me. Sometimes, but uh, no, yeah, I wouldn't think it's, it's changed a whole lot. You know. The respect is a big thing for you, isn't it? I suppose it's a funny word, though, respect, and you've got to be polite to everyone, but does everyone deserve respect? I don't know. It's got to be a hierarchy of respect, doesn't it, to a degree, but I think you should be polite to everyone. But Dave gets a lot of respect. Like, is that in the time that I've been with him, he seems yeah. to have a lot of respect. Uh, I, I think I think for you know for a certain uh, group of males, say between the ages of you know 18 and 50, you know males are aware of him, and there's some parts of his elements of his character that uh, 
he's quite attractive and people wish they could be as carefree about and cavalier about dangerous situations as, as Dave is, you know. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of celebrity and fame does uh, go a long way. But the people actually know him, respect him and like him because he's, he's good fun, he's funny. Mm -hmm. he, and he's, he's, helped, you know, he's helped me out. I snapped my bicep tendon. I remember that now. I snapped my bicep tendon years ago. And everyone will go, oh, if you need any money, you know, let me know if you need any help. He didn't even say that. He just, he just threw three grand at me. He said, yeah, get it fixed. You know, just hand it, put, put the money in my, in, in, you know, in my lap. Yeah. You know, uh, I already had three grand, but I took that as well. And, uh, yeah. and years later, I gave my motorbike sort of as a, as a, yeah. a, a trade-off. You know, but that's what he's like. If he's got money, he will help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's why, I, you know, not because he gives you money, but because uh, he's fun. It's yeah, he'll do, he's done a lot of favours for a lot of people, yeah. you know, and uh, he'll always do that in a, in a hope he'll get some of that back. Yeah. And what do you think about the way the authorities have come down on him? Hey, I don't know how much they have. Some of it, you know, I've got to be honest, some of it he brings upon himself, you know, you know, he brings it on himself. So, so uh, he, he's still at large, you know, he, he, maybe maybe it's not the, the, the theme of this, this documentary, but... I for, have for one, yeah, I, I love him, but if he just... But he, he's, got, yeah, he's got respect for the police in the, he's got, in the British system. He does respect it in a way, you know what I mean? But then he puts himself out, and, and part of him making money, he's got kind of, he's got a cocker snooker at, at the establishment. That's part of how he, how he, you know, that's part of his image, yeah. you know? And he probably doesn't mean it. Yeah, some of it he means, some of it he doesn't so much, but um, yeah, I don't think he's a, he's a huge victim, to be honest. I don't know if that's what that's what you want me to say, but I no, don't mean no, he's a victim. No, no, we want you to yeah, he, tell he, us a real day and what you think about well, the real he, day, because this documentary is about flirt, the real day. He enjoys flirting with danger yeah. and flirting yeah. with the authority and yeah. taking the mickey out of, you know, the establishment as well as... But, you know, also, also celebrating, just laughing and joking. Yeah. But obviously it's done in humour yeah. and uh, I don't have to say it the, the right way or the wrong way. Um, so, yeah, it serves him right. Should be locked up. <laughs> Take the free grand back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have your money back. Yeah, yeah. and keep the bike. Yeah, yeah. And keep the bike. But I've seen lots of... I think that's been wrapped around the tree by now, <laughs> that bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you been down to the dungeon? Well, I was there, I remember, even before we bought that house. Uh, really? Castle. Yeah, yeah, before we bought it, because it had, oh, yeah. had some subsidence issues, mm -hmm. uh, strangely. So it was years up. we first went and looked at it, and he was going to move in, and then it had some, some issues, and that all got fixed, so it was years off. This is going back a long way, you know. So I've been, I've been to the, the, the property that was, is now the dungeon. Yeah. I don't know what state it was in. It was, I think it was a garage, I think, when I saw it, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I think we filmed in that one day as well. We did a film. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I've seen it, but I haven't... Uh, uh, haven't had the delights of its fully equipped uh, dungeon status. Yeah. And what would you say about a character with a dungeon at the bottom of his garden? Well, I think it comes from another age uh, <laughs> in some ways. It depends what it's for, but I think it's a bit of a... I don't know what he gets up to down there. I don't want to know. Yeah. Well, could you say that's the flirty side of him again and there may be police officers down there? <laughs> with the think, certainly police uniforms down there. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. He's probably been eating them. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't experienced a dungeon for years, yeah. honest. But we were going through, he's saying honest, and he's winking at me whilst he's saying that. Um, but I was going through some of his photo albums and he was pointing at pictures and stuff, but he's got stories of everybody. Have you been on one of the holidays with him? No, because uh, my, my relationship with him is very much sort of like one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I'm yeah. not particularly into, into the scene, yeah. if, if, you, if you understand that. You know, it's like one pals with Dave. I, you know, I've got other friends in the group yeah. that, that, you know, that I see, but, you know, I'm not particularly into bo boys' holidays, you know. Yeah, so it's like a separate kind of group? Yeah, I just... I just yeah, I'm, I'm not one for going with, with a, you know, it's hard enough getting on with one person, let alone getting on with 30 people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you're on holiday yeah, no, and, yeah, the, and there's yeah. a few of them you don't like, you know, then, then you're, you're screwed, aren't you, for two weeks? So I'd sooner just pop in and pop out, you know. Yeah. Oh, get more yeah. bed space. So yeah. I think I fly out the window. But, <laughs> um, oh, this has been a very good documentary. Anything funny that you'd like to say? Any memories that you remember which is funny? Oh, just every, everything about him. I just... <laughs> He cooked him breakfast one one Christmas, and then we we had to go and buy some more sausages. And him, he just he just go down there and like a cowboy out his dressing gown and uh, driving in, a, in a, his Rolls Royce with cowboy boots on to, to, to buy sausages. And uh, just the fact you know he wouldn't think, oh, I better get dressed. He think, oh, this will do. You know, just all, all those old quirky things. He's not really worried about what people think about him. Um, maybe he should be, but you know he, he, he's not. It's yeah. just a free spirit. It's just always funny with him. He'll just crack a joke about, you know, everything. It's like every, every situation I've been with him has been 
He's been funny, and there's never once has he shown any aggression like you do. You better do the washing up. It's your turn. You know when we live together. Yeah, none of that. You know I'm going to cut your fingers off. It's like, like no. It's just like a, a regular funny, happy person who's always been very positive towards me, and um, and yeah, and I hope he has success in the future. And and uh, the authorities, you know, don't don't come down on too hard for anything that he has or hasn't done. Where do you see? Where do, where do you picture Dave to be? In the future, I hope, hopefully, you know, possibly, you know, in America, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got a very interesting, intriguing character. You know, I mean, most of his books have been written, but, you know, he's still, life's going on and things are always happening to him. I suppose, you know, you could have a reality show, show about him, but how do you capitalise on fame these days? I don't know. You know, it's easy to become famous, but not to become rich and famous is becoming more difficult. Uh, you know, I, I just hope he, he, he meets a, a, a good woman. Um, his health stays with him and um, he keeps out of trouble.